Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, today we're going to be looking closer into something known as established titles. Now, of course, in the last few days, you probably have seen what's been going on. I know that I couldn't avoid it in the inbox. Uh, now, of course, YouTuber Scott Schaefer uploaded a video that absolutely blew up a few days ago regarding established titles. And of course, it got around 2.3 million views as of now recording, okay? Now, of course, when you look at this video, the first image is of me. All right, and of course, it's not just me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to jump into this and sort of talk about this a little bit closer. Established Titles is a company that's been sponsoring pretty much every YouTuber available. Uh, apparently, apparently, if you have a pulse, you get sponsored. And according to Scott's video, uh, before I actually checked this, it used to be a list. And he's since made a video that actually catalogs every creator who's been uploading content and who's taken part in any of these sponsorships. So he's basically created a mega cut of everyone's integration. So, of course, you can see Ben Shapiro Shapiro over here. You can see, uh, you know, Impulsive, the the Logan, the Jake Paul, Logan Paul, if you if you will. You've got all the way down to random creators that I wouldn't have expected to even be part of this entire situation. It really seems like everyone was really covered in this entire, uh, you know, sponsor spree. You've got Dr. Todd Grandy. Okay, you've got all the way up to friends of the channel, Penguin Zero. Okay, on the official podcast specifically. Of course, you've also got a uh, old Professor Stick, if you will, too. A lot of people were were involved into this. Okay. Now, the reason I'm making this video is it's something I should have done a long time ago. Now that every bridge has really been burned to, I should have done this all the way from the start. If it's anything that I've learned in this entire situation, is no matter what, ultimately the blame falls upon me. Okay. Now I know that a lot of people have said that management companies are involved, and in our case, that was pretty much the the situation. We were brought this deal forward. We were basically reassured by the company and management and everyone involved that everything here was just a novelty gag gift and pretty much we decided to do the go ahead with it now obviously because of the recent backlash and of course because of the recent backlash looking into this even further is something i should have done from the beginning now i'm doing it and i'm doing it just to basically bring up everything out there because throughout all of what's happened in the last few days this has blown up to be sort of a uh, an issue if you will right you've got people saying that this is uh you know misinformation this whole thing is a little bit shady and you've got the other side saying this is just a gag gift to begin with Nobody should have taken this super duper seriously to begin with. Now me, I want to jump in and just do my due diligence like I should have done in the beginning. So of course, the framework for this video is going to be this letter right here. Now this is something that established titles has sent out to management and a few creators that they were partnered with. You might have seen this email already. So we're going to be looking through this, reading it, and sort of gauging all of this for ourselves. And hopefully throughout all of this, we'll learn about novelty land buying, the laws around it, so on and so forth. So, you know what? Let's sit down, relax, and go through a deep dive, if you will. Now, this letter, dated 24th, November 2022, we have recently come under a targeted, completely unfounded attack based on bogus claims from someone making a career out of personal attacks in an attempt to gain viewership. We deeply appreciate those creators who have come out in support for us and people who have voiced their refusal to participate in this cruel and vicious attempt to cancel and slander us. Now, I'm going to say from a professional response, maybe just as to the whole first paragraph, I think, uh, honestly, people investigating, it's going to happen all the time. Now, this type of uh, novelty land selling, like selling a square foot of land, has been happening for a long time with various other, you know, companies out there. Hell, people have bought stars in the, in the sky, so to speak, too. But we'll get to all that in a second. We are also deeply shocked that he would encourage an attack on other creators based on warping information that has already been openly shared and available from the very beginning. We ask that creators stand by what they believe and assess the claims for themselves. Now, for full context sake, I actually did message Scott Schaefer after we investigated this, watched his video, and I told him basically my side of the story, and Scott was a totally nice guy to me, all right? He was a nice guy in the DMs, and, uh, you know, it really didn't seem like the whole video even had bad blood towards me or anybody. So I'm not going to hold it against Scott. You know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, it is what it is. These kind of things tend to happen. Obviously, I expect to see my face in this scenario in some capacity. No matter who posts it, I get it. It's part of the YouTube game. It works in the algorithm. I understand it. I've done it in the past. I'm not going to shit on anybody for doing that as well, too. Established titles is a fun gift meant for the good laugh, and we've been absolutely transparent about this from day one. To compare us to going into someone's house and stealing is deeply offensive, and not only undermines our own work, but the good work of the charities and the creators who we have worked with. In the past two years, we have done more tangible work in the preservation of the woodlands in Scotland than anyone else to our knowledge. This includes donating to plants over 2 million trees and acquiring over hundreds of acres of land and contractually committing it to preserve in its natural state. 
This year, we are slated to be Trees for the Future's Giving Tuesday partner, matching all donations up to $50,000. It is a shame that this attempt to cancel us will make these efforts in the future that much harder. So again, I wanted to look at what they were talking about by being very open about it since the beginning. So let's actually look through their website. Now, obviously, on established titles' his website over here, they've got title packs. Purchase a personal lordship or ladyship title pack with a dedicated land in Scotland. Uh, of course, they've got a big-ass asterisk right here. The asterisk says, This is a purchase for a personal dedication for a souvenir plot of land. You may choose to title yourself with the title of Lord, Laird, or Lady. Our title packs are based on the historic Scottish land ownership custom, where landowners have been ref long referred to as Lairds, the Scottish term for Lord, with the female equivalent being Lady, okay? Every ladyship or lordship title pack contributes to the preservation and protection of woodland areas, as is the intention for the land to be kept in its natural state. We ask that all interested parties do bear this in mind. So obviously, the point of it was for them to preserve the actual woodland areas of Scotland, and also to be part of replanting trees all around. Not just in Scotland, but all over the world. Now, there's two groups that they work with. One of them is One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Now, Trees for the Future, as far as we've all been able to see, is pretty legitimate, okay? Now, I've checked this charity, and this is one of the things that we looked into before we even decided to run in with it, run with the sponsorship. We looked at Trees for the Future. They've been around since 1989, okay? They are completely set in the U.S. I think it's Maryland where they're actually where they're actually into, or, um, incorporated. Uh, but this is a full-on 501c, like, non-profit. So, of course, they said over 2 Point zero six million trees have been planted. Okay, now I decided to go into the Wayback Machine, and somewhere around September third, twenty twenty one, last year, uh, they said over five hundred and sixty five thousand six hundred and thirty. The reason I did the Wayback Machine was to just see a pattern of progression. Now, obviously, trees of the future is very legit. I don't think that they would lie about the numbers planted. The reason why these numbers increase just year after year, from what I understand, is the company has to make like a payment, like an actual payment once per year, like a full lump sum payment, and that gets into actually planting these trees. Now, of course, we got that out of the way cleared. I think one of the biggest uh, sort of gripes with a lot of this has been the idea of this title pack allowing you to call yourself as a lord, laird, or lady, okay? So basically, this is a purchase for a dedication to a souvenir plot of land. You may choose to title yourself. So again, if you look through their actual testimonials, it's wild because like you look at some things where like, for instance, since the purchase of my two lots for my wife and myself, I've noticed a difference in the service and the level of etiquette showed towards us. That's cool. One of the images is like one with a passport. Now, obviously, the notion where some people believed by a lot of the YouTubers um, integrations or how this was presented was that by having this title, you could legally attach this to important documents like your passports, your credit cards, your driver's licenses, so to speak. Now, based on the information we were provided in like any briefing, that was never the case. This was just novelty stuff. A lot of these are novelty um, titles, if you will, too. Uh, and of course, I think it's wild to show a passport. Obviously, this is a passport that I have, a Canadian passport. And if I flip through it, I'm not going to show it on camera, obviously. You can see that it has like an issuing country, surname, username. And of course, nowhere does it even have Mr., Mrs., or any form of like, uh, you know, title attached to it. Obviously, that's about all the information a passport document is going to need. Same with a driver's license and whatnot. Honestly, tomorrow when I wake up, I'm probably going to go down to Service Ontario to renew my driver's license. I'm going to see if I can try to even get the term Lord attached to it. I probably won't, but if I do, I'll update it and show you all on the internet anyways. Of course, if you go down, you've got other testimonials like, My husband loves his gift! Husband, are you showing me a screenshot of Tinder, bro? Oh, that's that's a little wild. I want to see the story around here. Jesus Christ. By the way, if you put this in your Tinder profile, you're never getting a goddamn match. I'm just saying. Now, of course, when you go down over here, what's interesting is the established title blog. Now, of course, one thing is response to criticism from non-customers, which is something new that sort of kicked in. So they started to basically talk about like false claims that were basically being said, like customers don't understand that they're purchasing official legal titles, which they showcase what we just read. Of course, they also showed the briefings that they send out to creators when they're making their integrations. Now, when creators make integrations, that like one minute pre-roll or a mid-roll ad, they have to make it, send it to the actual company so that they can vet it and approve it. The reason why any company does that is like, for instance, if I just tell you, hey guys, uh, G Fuel, by the way, do you guys know that G Fuel is going to get you laid? Obviously, that is a false, misleading statement to make. 
G Fuel would never approve me saying that, all right? No way is Sonic Peach Rings gonna get you laid. Using code SOG is not gonna get you laid. If anything, this shit's gonna keep you awake at night like it does for me, okay? That's pretty much how it works. So yeah, that's pretty much why you have to send in these integrations so that they can be vetted beforehand. So really any statement a YouTuber makes, 100, I would say almost 100% of the time has been vetted by the company involved, okay? So they looked at the integration, they said, yep, we're cool with that, put it in the video, call it a day. It's why we have to wait for like a couple of these videos to be like available. Like we have to wait for the sponsor to say yes before the video can even go live to begin with. Now, of course, looking into this entire situation, what's rather important for me is using the Wayback Machine to sort of see if any of this stuff changed beforehand. So, for instance, this statement right up here, where they actually mention the uh, souvenir plot of land, right here. If I go into the Wayback Machine, what am I going to see? Now, going all the way back as early as I could to April 24, 2020, if we go around over here, yes, since the beginning, they have been saying this is a purchase for a personal dedication for a souvenir plot of land. You may choose to title yourself with the title of Lord, Laird, or Lady, okay? So that's April 24, 2020, as per the Wayback Machine, okay? Now, of course, even looking further into it, all the way back in May 6, 2020, they even showed where the land was actually located on Google Maps. So you can basically take this link, throw it into Google Maps, and effectively you'll be finding out that it is this part of the land that you can actually see what they apparently claim to own. Now, of course, this land over here is purchased for natural, like, uh, preservation, if you will, too. So if we take a little street view guy and drop it onto the road, you can see that the land actually looks somewhere like this. Very beautiful, indeed. Scotland is a, Scotland is a beautiful country, and of course, you can see right over here, this is the land they claim to own, okay? As per their website. Now, what's rather also interesting in this situation, where we have to look into this even further, is their blog, okay? So this is where things get a little hazy. Now, if you look into their blog, obviously it's designed to gain SEO, search engine optimization. And of course, in some cases you can see, for instance, March 2nd, 2021. So becoming a Scottish Lord, the real deal. So let's actually read that. Okay, the real deal, let's go. So as our blog name suggests, with established titles, you can become a Scottish Lord, Lady, or Laird. How is this the real deal? Purchasing is incredibly simple. Simply visit our website, enter the details of recipient, select whether you'd like a digital printed or framed certificate, and then check out. Your plot of land is legitimate. You'll receive a unique plot number that reflects your plot of land in Scotland. You're even able to see the land on a map or even visit it should you be so inclined, okay? So again, this is where like when you're advertising things, uh, the wording gets a little bit wild. So your land is legitimate. You'll receive a unique plot number. Now, carefully, they're also not saying that you own that plot of land. You could visit it. You can even see it on a map. Yes, you can use your title in daily life. Your new title can be reflected on many documents such as credit cards, plane tickets, hotel bookings, and more. Now again, I may have to question some of this. Obviously, when I looked at my passport and driver's license earlier, those are government documents. Depending on where you live and what the jurisdiction is, you may never even be allowed to change that or add like uh, all, these, um, all these titles to it. With things like credit cards, I actually had to look on the internet, and again, this is where we're getting into like fully anecdotal evidence, okay? I literally went to Reddit of all places to find out if people were even trying this. So, for instance, in r slash legal, Australia, obviously, uh, of course, my wife surprised me last night with a birthday present. I don't want any more birthdays, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Apparently, I'm now the proud owner of a two square foot of land in Scotland. My friend bought this and somehow convinced his bank and university to give him the title. Not sure about his driver's license, but his degree has Lord on it. Not sure about other states, but driver's license is in WA, can't have titles. So, of course, um, yeah, it might depend on what your bank and university have to do with it. Maybe you might be able to add it to a credit card. In some cases, your driver's licenses aren't giving that away, okay? Now, I've also read other things where, like, r slash Calgary, adding Lord title to passport or driver's license... First of all, titles like Lord are not valid in Canada. Again, this is like a six-year-old post, by the way, too. When I became King of Canada, I just wrote it in passport myself. I don't know how many times these honorifics are actually added. I don't know how many times somebody has went to Service Ontario to do this themselves. But uh, yeah, it would be an interesting case to see somebody buying these titles and trying to actually apply it in the US, Canada, or any other country for a serious government passport or serious government document. So again, going back to their website, obviously for plane tickets, hotel bookings, you may even have to question with which airlines you might be able to do this, under what travel restrictions, like depending on which country and how they handle travel in and out. It, it, it's a whole set of things to go into. 
And of course, finally, we plant a tree for every order. I'm not really going to question this because the companies involved, the nonprofits involved, the charities involved are actually willing to put their name on the line. So unless we're calling the charities liars, that's a whole different story. Now, of course, going in further, obviously, the way that this blog is written, again, I wonder if they had absolutely written it as completely, like, as transparent as possible. Like, hey, listen, this is just a joke document. This is a gag gift. Obviously, you are not really a lord or a lady. This is about as legitimate as anybody watching this video. Uh, if you watch this video, you can now claim to call yourself Lord of the Muda Crack House, okay? Put that in the comment section below. You are now the lord or lady of the Muda Crack then, all right? That's pretty much how things go. So, of course, looking further into their entire thing, one of them is titled, You Won't Believe This Legal Loophole in Scotland, okay? Historically, there are only a handful of ways one can become a lord or a lady. You can be born into it, marry into it, or be appointed to the House of Lords in the UK by the Prime Minister and the Queen. Both options are obviously out of reach for most, however, there is a small legal loophole in Scotland that makes it possible for anyone to title themselves as a lord or a lady. This all fascinatingly hinges on the historic Scottish customers referring to landowners as laird, which happens to be the Scots for lord. With the female equivalent being lady, all you need is at least one square foot of land in Scotland itself. Though of course there are no restrictions on having more land. These small plots of lands are referred to as souvenir plots, which have a long history in Scotland themselves. Through this loophole, anyone can buy a small plot of land in Scotland and refer to themselves as lord or lady. So at this point, I decided to look into the legalities around souvenir plots, okay? So per a series on Scots Law, okay? Souvenir titles or souvenir plots are a commonly sold online good or physical gift set, whereby a seller will advertise ownership of a small plot of land in Scotland. Of course, however, the purchase is of no legal effect, and many commentators of the legal practice consider it to be a scam. So let's go down over here real quick. Okay, let's actually read it. So again, right of ownership. The souvenir plot will advertise the purchase of ownership of a small plot of land as part of an estate. However, Scott's property law only recognizes a defined number of real rights or rights in rem, which follow the legal principle shared with other jurisdictions. Okay, so again, I know it's a little boring and like wordy, but let's go down into here. Transferring the right of ownership in Scots law. There are three stages to creating a right of ownership in land. Number one, the contract and the missus of sales. For the contract to be formally valid, it must meet the requirements of Writing Act 1995. Number two, the conveyance. For the conveyance to be formally valid, the deed known as a disposition must meet the right requirements of writing. And number three, registration in the Land Register of Scotland. This must be registered validly in accordance with the Land Registration Scotland Act 2012. So again, registration of souvenir plots. Even if a seller of souvenir plots does validly create a contract of sale for the plot of land and provide the buyer with a valid disposition, the registration of the disposition deed is not possible under the Land Registration Act 2012. So again, right over here, Land Registration Act 2012, Section 22. In subsection 1b, souvenir plot means a plot of land which is of inconsiderable size, one square foot, and of no practical utility, and is neither a registered plot, nor a plot the ownership of which has any time separately been constituted or transferred by a document re recorded in the Register of Assassins. So from what I've understood, it's kind of like real life real estate. If you wanna buy a real house, a real piece of property, there's a lot of paperwork involved, lawyers gotta be involved, there's a lot of tax you gotta pay, there's a lot of documentation you gotta to sign to officially have it registered in the country itself. When you buy a house, before you get the deed, there's a lot of actual signatures you yourself do with a lot of lawyers present, a lot of brokers present, and an official documentation signed for that plot of land to the actual government going to you, the person, or whatever like entity is purchasing the land, right? So I looked into the entire situation and I found the actual Scotland heraldic authority, okay? So I found one of them, all right, which is the Court of the Lord Leon, all right? Now, of course, when I look into the actual court itself, over here, I have to actually apply for coat of arms, okay? So, for instance, who can have a coat of arms? Anyone resident in Scotland or who owns a house or land in Scotland may apply to the Lord Leon Kings of Arms or a Scottish coat of arms. If you are not a resident in Scotland and do not own any property there, you may be able to apply for arms to be granted in the name of an ancestor who lived in Scotland, okay? So again, if you want to get royalty or any heraldic authority, then these guys, these are the people that you go through it, okay? The court of the actual Lord Leon. Now, I have located my coat of the arms on the internet, okay? 
So for instance, there are many websites which supply information about coat of arms which are set to apply to particular names. Unfortunately, most of this information is completely inauthentic. In many cases, what is supplied is the design of the arms belonging to the chief of the clan. Uh, only the individual chief himself can use these arms and is completely incorrect. Now, according to another website, another group involved in things like title selling, Highland Titles, they actually literally referenced and gave out a letter from one of our customers. Leon, actually Lord Leon, has no official governance on the sale of land or the adoption of the style of Laird by the new owner, okay? So in this letter, you can literally read right here. Thank you for your letter of 28th May enclosing your earlier letter of 25th April. I'm afraid we have no record of receiving your letter. You are right in thinking I am not infrequently asked to recognize a territorial designation in connection with a grant or matriculation of arms. I enclose with this letter general guidance on the matter posted on the Court of the Lord Leon website. I have no official remit or governance over the sale of souvenir plots of land. You instance one square foot or the adoption of the style of Laird by your new owner. However, I would not recognize such a purchase as being adequate to establish jurisdiction so far as a grant of arms is concerned, nor would I recognize the style of Laird in these circumstances. So obviously there is no official jurisdiction. Even the court over here doesn't look at it. And I assume they get so many requests that they just groan constantly because of it. Obviously, these are gag gifts. Again, I'm going into it. And the reason why I went this hard into the research is because I wanted to really look into what the authority was and what it takes to become an official, I guess you could say, lord or lady, or, or like have the most official possible title. And it seems like there's a lot more, obviously, than just buying, uh, you know, a package on the internet, okay? Now, I will say, given what I've read on these blogs and everything, I think the way the wording is written and the way that this has been showcased can definitely lead somebody into having some uh, misconceptions about the entire deal. I feel like if they had just outright basically said, hey, this is a very, they pretty much told you it's a novelty gift, but they should also pretty much tell you that these titles, like pretty much any title on the internet, has no real validity in calling yourself or gaining any coat of arms or any official prestige in an actual court in Scotland, okay? So again, all the funding for established titles has come from Galton Voicey Limited, which has been mainly funded by William Wolfram. Without this funding, we would never have been able to acquire our initial plots of land in Scotland or invest in bold marketing efforts as we have, basically investing in YouTubers. This has led to hundreds of acres of land being conserved and millions of trees planted, not to mention the thousands of smiles on people's faces as they gift it, okay? So again, what's important here is Galton Voicey Limited. Now, when we saw Scott's video, Galton Voicey was a pretty integral part of it. Now, Galton Voicey, from what I understand, is an e-commerce giant. And of course, if you look at Galton Voicey, one of the images, one of the places I found was the Galton's Gift Guide. Every year we put a gift guide out. Some suggestions are from our own independent family of brands and some from other businesses. We're an equal opportunity employer and a proud member of the Galton Voicey family of companies. Now, if you look at the five perfect gifts for 2021, one of them is Kamikoto Knives, okay? Now, Kamikoto Knives, if you actually look into the company over here, this is a company that apparently seems to be headquartered in Japan, like as they've written right over here in Tokyo. But of course, what was really uh, questionable for a lot of people looking into it was that Galson Voicey, or Galton Voicey, if you look at their USPTO trademarks and you scroll around a bit into it, they actually own a few trademarks, one of them being established title. But then, of course, if you dig even further into just Kamikoto, you'll find out that through an open corporate's listing, they actually do appear to have some involvement in the registration of the Kami Koto trademark. Now, if you actually go to the USPTO trademark, you can see that Kami Koto, all right, the company in this case, if you look at all their information, for instance, they're involved in, um, uh, let me see, the steel knives and whetstones. Obviously, they're making like cutlery. Uh, if you look at it, they're a Japanese company, but if you look at their actual assignment abstract of title information, their registrant is Galton Voicey Limited, okay? So clearly it seems like the company is owned or at least has a severe involvement with Galton Voicey. And of course, the further we look into it, established titles, which is also involved, again, with uh, Galton Voicey, okay? So if you actually look at it right now, their current owner information is Galton Voicey. And even if you look at Sterling Pacific's website, just scrolling through it, they'll straight up tell you the company was acquired by the brand developer Galton Voicey, okay? So Galton Voicey has a few brands under their wing, okay? It's not just established title. It seems like Sterling Pacific is involved and Kami Koto seems like to be part of it. I couldn't confirm if Historic Mail was part of it too, which is a service where they literally send you uh, letters every week from like historical figures like uh, I, I, George Washington, for instance, and FDR, kind of wild. 
But of course, this is just some of the stuff that you can see, all right? So obviously, this was brought into it, and this is where, like, people, this is where, like, one of the established titles sort of, like, front runners. So for a lot of people wondering where they got the money from to buy the land in the first place and to sponsor YouTubers with these massive deals, it was from a big company known as Galton Voicey, which owns a bunch of other brands, it seems. A Galton Voicey has supported us since day one, even though they knew that their initial funding would be a total financial loss, okay? It would lead to financial loss. This year alone, they made a multi-million dollar loss on an established title. Obviously, they're sponsoring YouTubers. They've continued to give their full support as they strongly believe that established titles will not only grow to become a terrific business in the long run, but also a great example of how you can do well by doing good. Now, of course, to look at it as they're planting trees and selling these titles, if you will, these novelty gag gifts, I kind of have to wonder how great of a business it is when they're committed to making multi-million dollar losses to begin with, okay? It's just... I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't get the business model. I'm sure they could explain it better. We are extremely proud of the work that the teams at Galton Voicey, Trifecta Retail Ventures, and Fail Ventures, which is another trademark of Galton Voicey, have done across over 70 businesses around the world. In fact, Fail Ventures, uh, about us, uh, in 2008, we have created 78 new ventures from scratch. 72 have failed, and six have succeeded, okay? So... Again, they're, they're all about normalizing failure, okay? It happens, I guess, in the world of business. So again, I want to thank William, where many entrepreneurs would sit back on a beach drinking Mai Tais. He had re reinvested virtually all the money that's been made into funding new ventures. Okay, cool. I am American and moved to Hong Kong as a child from Paris with my family before moving to the UK as a young adult. I moved back to Hong Kong, as many do for my family. To use the place of my childhood as a tool in trying to create a witch hunt is mean and hurtful. Obviously, what uh, is referenced to is uh, Scott Schaefer looking into Galton Voicey. And Galton Voicey is a Hong Kong-based business which uh, I believe falls under like mainland China at this point. I don't think, let me actually fact check that, uh, is a special administrative uh, region of the People's Republic of China. Um, is it part of, yeah, it's a sovereign state is in China. So it is technically a Chinese company. It's not, again, Hong Kong is like administratively different, but I, as, as of now, it's not like a British, uh, you know, venture. It, it, it's now part of China. With respect to other claims, there's been absolutely nothing new brought to light. We brought a couple hundreds of acres of land in Scotland, have pledged to protect it and keep it as forever and plant a tree with every order we get, okay? So, of course, one of them was actually here. We have always been clear that our certificates are based on the historic Scottish custom of calling landowners lairds, lords, and ladies, and that it does not grant you the right to rule or make you a member of any royal family, nor the right to a peerage, okay? I guess with some of the blog postings that we saw earlier in the video, it's a bit questionable. Maybe the wording should have been done a little bit better, all right? Otherwise, you know, at the end of the day, I guess they were always saying that it was um, uh, novelty land to begin with. We've always hoped that our customers enjoy the experience, uh, and if for whatever reason, we've always honored refund and cancellation requests fully, okay? We also appreciate uh, uh, we received from both our customers and you, our creators. We hope that you will have the strength to stand by and not join in with the mob. However, we understand this is no easy task, and we will not hold it against you if you prefer to sit this one out. If you want to cancel any existing bookings or future contracts with us, we will accept all cancellations without question, but with great regret. So they're literally allowing any creator to completely cancel their obligations with, with with established titles, which I think is about the the only thing that they could have done instead of pressing this even further. Now, if you look at the about us section, all right, with uh, the uh, actual person behind this, uh, the pet project over here, uh, who the person here is Katrina Yip or Cat Yip. Uh, of course, you can see these three paragraphs when you way back machine all the way back to October 8, 2020. These are the only three paragraphs to exist, right? What they've added is they've said that Established Titles is proud to be a member of the Galton Voicey Tree Planting Initiative. And of course, they've also added Established Titles as a fun gift, meant for a good laugh and not to be taken too seriously. With the help of a few friends, I bought a few hundred acres of land in Scotland, pledged to protect it, so on and so forth. Now, one of the reasons why I should have absolutely looked into this earlier is that this isn't the first time that companies like this have been given criticism. So another company known as Highland Titles made a post in 2015 where they had a response to criticism, okay, where they were claimed to be a scam, apparently, and they were basically giving a bunch of reasons why, okay? Like, would a scam operation succeed in obtaining advice from Scottish solicitors that confirmed the legality of our business model, and so on and so forth, okay? Would a scam operation have a 30-day no-quibble return policy, okay? Would a scam operation be so readily contractable, uh, contactable, contactable, there you go.
Are we actually selling land? So again, a lot of the posts and a lot of the criticisms that they were talking about mirror what we're seeing with established titles. So it's not the criticism that we've seen like kick up just because of established titles. This has sort of been mentioned a lot of times in a lot of these similar like souvenir plot selling websites. You know, one of the things that I looked up with Canadians and royalty was like one block site telling me to go to Canadians can now become a British lord or lady for only $42, okay? And of course, this led me to another website known as Lord Titles, okay? Which again, they're also selling lordship and ladyship titles as well too. So here you can see each pack includes five square feet of dedicated estate land by Caniston Water within the Lake District National Park, okay? So again, a lot of these are... Um, our title packs are based on the historic English Lord. Okay, so now we're, not, now we're not even going to the Scottish stuff. English Lord of the Manor title that supports the legal right to use the honorific title Lord or Lady. Again, we do not guarantee honorific title changes in government documents, which do not display any title such as all passports. And in some jurisdictions, driver's licenses cannot be updated. So again, here they're giving another disclaimer as well, too. Honestly, this title puts you in the same level of calling yourself Lord or Lady for anything. You could call yourself Lord of Muda's Crack House, and I'm never going to contest it, okay? I give you that right. Now, of course, it's very similar to other things like naming a star, for instance, where you can buy uh, pieces of stars, like, around the sky. They even have, like, a whole app on this website where you can actually see your star. Uh, in some cases, you've got $34 packages, $80 packages, and $79 packages. So you can buy an infinite amount of stars around. Now, the reason why this was brought up recently is that currently a lot of people are advertising a lot of these title packs because it's Christmas season. And obviously, for a gift, a last minute gift, this becomes a pretty easy to, easy pickup. And obviously, you're going to see a lot of these things towards November, December because of Christmas, because of the holidays. You know, if you want to go even further, there's an entire separate section of buying lunar real estate, too. And before I go into this, this is something I want to cover for a separate video entirely where people literally have like UN loophole documents about owning entire planets. And there is tens of millions of dollars of extraterrestrial real estate currently being sold. And of course, there's entire beef between the companies over here too. They're even giving you warnings about copycat companies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fair to say if you own any deeds to the moon, they're not going to be valid when the U.S. Space Force eventually takes over, okay? I'm just putting it out there. Now, this video is looking at uh, 40 minutes already, which is way too long, way too, way longer than it actually needed to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to look at this entire situation to really come down with like... Uh, now, this video is already reaching 40 minutes in length, and I want to kind of call it quits where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to really look into it because honestly, in the last few days, I can't stop reading comments about it. And it's blown up to a situation where, honestly, I should have done my due diligence to begin with. So looking at it right now, obviously, this is... Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this uh, change to gameplay signifies that the camera crashed. So again, we're at the ending anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to what happened with established titles, obviously, you know, at the end of the day, this is a gag gift, and that's pretty much as we use the Wayback Machine to witness. It was pretty much initially billed as. Now, of course, uh, established titles, I believe, for some viewers, for some people who chose to buy into it, genuinely believed that they had, you know, full ownership of the land of a piece of land out there and it wasn't just a souvenir for people to get misled that's just never okay now at the end of the day when we witnessed just how the situation blew up established titles really gained a lot of notoriety and a lot of this kind of press because of how aggressively i believe they pushed with youtubers and various other people these companies have existed for over 10 15 years and whether you're buying land in scotland you're buying stars you're you know adopting a tiger in the middle of like angola zaire or out of nowhere, you're, uh, you're, you're purchasing plots on the moon, so to speak. At the end of the day, Novelty Real Estate ends up becoming one of the longest running gag gift uh, businesses out there. And it's a multi-million dollar business or an industry, so it seems. Now, of course, at the end of the day, when we witness things like established titles, they flew way too close to the sun and they gained a lot of notoriety from people who really didn't have an idea that this kind of a business even existed. You know, if it's anything that I learned from this entire video and this entire ordeal is the amount of laws and the amount of businesses that exist that normally would have flown by my radar had I not actually looked into them. I didn't know that established titles was a, a business and there was plenty of other businesses like this where they were just selling novelty lands and planting trees. At the end of the day, it seems like the trees are being planted by the one company that they've partnered with, the actual nonprofits. And for that, that's genuinely better than what I expected. Okay, that was one of the big gripes that I had initially when this all blew up. 
Now, obviously, they do offer full refund. So if you feel like you want a refund, if you ever put money into it, definitely email them up. They have like up to 60 days from last I read. Definitely get it. Definitely uh, endure. If you feel like you need it, go for it. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the established title saga. I wanted to deep dive into it. I wanted to look into it. And honestly, at the end of all of it, I feel like I came out learning about how uh, hereditary or like heraldic titles are treated and how real estate and Scott's law and all. Honestly, I felt like I learned a lot about law just in regards to other parts of the world. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you buy a piece of uh, paper on the internet, it's not going to signify that you own a piece of land. If you buy a square foot of land from any of these title companies, you do not actually appear to own that piece of land. It still belongs to that company. It's a souvenir plot of land. And I guess we all just learned about uh, legalities and laws and a bunch of things. But this brings the end of established titles and hopefully... Tomorrow, we can go into something newer. And of course, I want to apologize once again. This is the level of vetting I should have done beforehand. It literally didn't take me any longer than 20 minutes to do so. And I should have done it in the beginning. And I pledge to actually keep doing this for any sponsor role we take in the future to fund any form of video content that we're making. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. Sorry if the video was a little dry and wordy. Uh, just when I do these deep dives, I try to look at everything as much as I can. And if there's not like a definitive story or a yay or nay at the end of the video, that's just how things tend to go, all right? That's what happens when you just present information as it's meant to be presented. Anyways, this is me, Mudahar. These are the facts. Uh, again, if you want to get a refund, definitely feel free to pursue it. The site definitely endorses it up to 60 days. Go for it, ladies and gentlemen. This is me, Muda, and I am out.